People with big money trying to make the population think a certain way and hold a certain set of opinions through manipulative means. Okay? That definitely happens in the entertainment industry. The big trending item at the moment is the Gillette advert, which you may well have seen, where it essentially, instead of just trying to sell razors, they are essentially trying to teach men how to be men. It's so in your face that they essentially overplayed their hand. It kind of needs to be very much in the background where you're lulled into, into thinking a certain way about a certain thing without realizing that you're being lulled, hypnotized essentially. Um, with the Gillette advert, <laughs> you know, they started talking about toxic masculinity. Listen, no man likes the phrase toxic masculinity. I'm okay with a phrase like toxic behavior because that's pertaining to both genders, right? Toxic masculinity. You know, you want to sell razors to men and you want to start your advert by using the phrase toxic masculinity. Wow. Unbelievable. So, I was delighted to see that there was this huge backlash against the advert. And if you haven't seen the advert, it contains things like um, there's a man who sees a beautiful woman walking past and he starts walking towards her like he's going to maybe go and ask her out or something. And another man stops him, puts his hand on his chest and says, no, not cool, bro. <laughs> there's a couple of kids uh, having a bit of regular rough and tumble on the grass and there's a whole row of dads at barbecues going, boys will be boys, boys will be boys. Like these are all weak men. And then there's one man who comes over and pulls the kids apart and says, this isn't the way to behave. You know, <laughs> it's all this, they're teaching us how to be men. Like we don't know how to be men. Overcome our toxic masculinity. It's so ridiculous. So I am delighted that there has been this backlash because it means there still is hope for the human race that it's actually out there thinking about what it consumes through the television uh, and not just, not just letting it all sit in the mind and become a part of how you think. So um, I have some Gillette razors in there and that's it. I won't be buying Gillette again. And uh, I'm doing that because I see other people making that same choice. You know, let's... Uh, Let's really show the company that they messed up badly by refusing to buy their product. Anyway, that's Gillette. Another example of this, much more subtle, is Netflix. I took out a Netflix subscription a long time ago and I kept it for a couple of months and consumed a few TV shows and then I just gave it up because to be honest, I preferred Amazon Prime. And I didn't really want to have two because it was taking up too much of my spare time. I didn't really want to watch that much TV. But anyway, while I had Netflix, uh, the shows I watched, I noticed a trend in the shows that were Netflix financed. You know, the ones that have the big letter N coming up uh, on the title sequence because Netflix made them. Uh, Almost always, now I won't say always, but I'll say almost always, there are some sort of LGBTQ elements in the TV show. Uh, Gypsy, for instance, that one with Naomi Watts, uh, she has a daughter who is having some kind of identity issues where she seems to be going through a, like a tomboy kind of phase. She's maybe 10 years old. She wants to get her hair cut short. She wants to run around with her shirt off, essentially acting like a boy. It's not, it doesn't serve the story in any way. It's just there, right? And it looks totally innocent that it's there. And I, I really have no problem with something like that being in a story in and of itself. But when you take what I'm about to say next and notice a kind of trend, other shows like The Killing, Seasons one and two of The Killing were not financed by Netflix. I don't recall any sort of prevalence of any LGBTQ themes in it. Then all of a sudden Netflix takes over at season three 
And right there in episode one, they have an older woman who's the mother of one of the, the one of the detectives, and all of a sudden, she's getting remarried, and it's a, a lesbian. Suddenly, she's a lesbian out of the blue. Episode one, season three, the very beginning of Netflix financing the show, turn a character into a lesbian, right? Who <laughs> wasn't a lesbian before? Um, and there are other shows that, that do this, and I, I noticed it in that, that Haunting of Hill House. I caught episode one of that. Sure enough, one of the characters is a free-spirited lesbian. And it's okay to have gays, lesbians, transgenders. It's okay to have these things in TV shows. But the fact that everywhere you see Netflix, you see LGBTQ, when it's nothing to do with the story, there's something going on there. And it's... What must be happening is Netflix are saying to the people who want to make these shows, okay, we want to finance your show, but you have to put this in it. We want to see some kind of LGBTQ positivity in your show with one of the characters, right? So it's not about storytelling. It's about putting a political agenda deliberately into entertainment in a very subtle way that's designed to make people think a certain way about a certain issue. It's not designed to teach you by engaging your rational mind. It's designed to present you a view of reality that sinks down into your subconscious and basically makes you think, well, this is the way things are. It's how I'm supposed to think because it's what I'm experiencing through my entertainment. I've yet to see the day when we have a Netflix show that has a transgender character who decides to go for hormone treatment and then decides they want to have a baby but finds out that they're sterile. Because that would be reality, right? The risks of sterility and cancer through hormone treatments. But no, we don't want to see that in an entertainment show. We just want to see LGBTQ positivity and nothing else. And we want to get the public to think a certain way about it without knowing why they think that way about it. You see? So, the cherry on top of Netflix for me was their attitude to the award-winning documentary The Red Pill by Cassie J, a documentary about men's rights activism. A documentary that's got nothing really to do with LGBTQ, but it is to do with um, opposing feminism and feminism and LGBTQ, that all exists on the political left of the spectrum, right? So that seems to be where the people with the money reside. They're all on the political left, particularly far left. This documentary can be watched through services like Amazon Prime, and I think Hulu and a bunch of others, they all carry it, except Netflix. Netflix will not carry an award-winning, multi-award winning documentary but they'll carry all sorts of things, including lots of garbage that's maybe rated 5.0 or less on IMDb. They just won't let you see an award-winning documentary that is opposed to the political ideology of the people who run Netflix. They don't want you to hear a certain side of the story. It's censorship. So folks, if you are a supporter of Netflix and you understand and appreciate what I'm saying here, you might want to reconsider that because I don't think I could see myself resubscribing to Netflix even if they had a bunch of shows that I really wanted to see. I think on principle, because of how they treated Cassie J and her documentary, I don't think I would do it. Watch your TV very critically. Um, I've said this before. Television is church. It's church for the secular masses who don't go to church. For the unthinking, uncritical masses who have to be told how to think by our masters with the money. Yeah? Alright folks, take care.